What is carbon footprint? And how to reduce it? Food and carbon footprint. Food production and consumption are large contributors to greenhouse gas emissions. When shopping, consider these three factors. How was it produced? From where did it come? And how did it get here? The term food miles is often used to describe the potential greenhouse gas impact of agricultural products. Generally speaking, locally produced foods are associated with fewer food miles. Foods that arrive by air have a much higher carbon footprint than those that arrived by ship. Likewise, products that have been grown in heated greenhouses also has a high carbon footprint. Meat and dairy products have high carbon footprints because of the methane produced by cattle and if there's deforestation to provide grazing land. But surprisingly the easiest way to reduce greenhouse gas emissions associated with our food supply isn't watching while we consume. Instead, it's reducing what we don't consume. According to the Food Waste in Canada study, an estimated 40% of food is wasted after leaving the farm. Methane may be omitted when waste food decays in the landfills. So discarding food makes total emissions in the production and consumption cycle even worse. So plant a garden, buy local and eat your leftovers. Vacations and carbon footprint. Okay, so we know about the impact when food is flown to its destination. Well, we can be part of that same problem. Tourism accounts for an estimated 5% of global greenhouse gas emissions, and air travel is the most significant contributor to that percentage. Taking off and landing uses the most fuel. So booking multiple hops will emit more greenhouse gases. Based on average ridership, a train is usually the greenest mode of transportation, followed by an automobile carrying multiple passengers. However, if we include emissions associated with building infrastructures like rail lines and roads, the actual carbon footprint of a vacation can increase significantly. Transporting a family across the country or across the world burns a lot of fossil fuel and is expensive. So take the time to re-explore your own city. Nothing beats staycations. Transportation and Carbon Footprint the carbon footprint of driving is influenced by several factors. First is the number of people in the car. Carpooling is an opportunity to save money and the planet. It even saves time when HOV lanes are available. Surprisingly, about 50% of the fuel consumed in city driving is used during acceleration. To reduce this, use the most efficient route, combined trips and travel at off-peak times. Reducing idling time is also important. Idling for 10 minutes a day can produce a quarter ton of CO2 emissions each year. Maintaining your vehicle and checking your tire pressure at least once a month can reduce fuel consumption by as much as 10%. When buying a car consider its city and highway gas rating. Smaller cars, eco and hybrid versions of cars and now electric cars are available from almost every manufacturer. Starting off on the right set of wheels can save you many hundreds or even thousands of dollars a year. And instead of just passing that old jalopy on to someone else, scrap it. Many regions in the world such as British Columbia provides incentives to move older higher polluting vehicles off the road. And finally traveling by transit, bicycle or even walking benefits more than just the Earth's atmosphere. It allows us to enjoy the added bonuses of physical activity and social interaction while saving money. Heating homes and carbon footprint. Heating our homes is often our largest use of household energy. When our heating bills arrive each winter, we are reminded of the amount of energy it takes to keep warm. Heating from electricity means your carbon footprint is low for now. But the demand for more electricity is creating the need for additional sources of energy. Homes that heat with oil or natural gas currently have a larger carbon footprint. Whatever your heating source, it is beneficial to use less fuel. So before we go any further, let's put on a sweater, and turn down the thermostat by 1 degree. When you go to bed at night or leave on vacation, turn it down another 3 or 4 degrees. Draft proofing by plugging air leaks is a cheap and effective way to reduce energy consumption and is a fast payback time. In cold weather use ceiling fans to distribute heat that collects against the ceiling. This will create a more consistent temperature in the room. If your feet are cold, your body will feel cold. By placing area rugs on cold floors you may be less likely to crank up the thermostat. Making informed choices about transportation, food, and energy use at home is one of the best opportunities we have as individuals to reduce our carbon footprint. 
Every little thing we can do to reduce our individual or household carbon footprint will help to combat global warming. And just imagine the impact if hundreds of millions of us were to join that parade. You can make a difference.